Alrighty, we'll get started with our next presentation. Roger uh, Trimble uh, is, uh, uh, is it Trimble? Yes. Trimble, Trimble, yeah, I thought, I thought I, I misspelled it on my handwriting, sorry about that, uh, is with Grand Tierra, uh, and, and uh, uh, they're a company focused on oil and gas exploration and production in Colombia and Ecuador. Uh, the company's common shares trade on the New York Stock Exchange, America, uh, the New York Stock Exchange, America Exchange, and the London Stock Exchange, and the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol GTE. Grand Tierra believes in creating value for all their stakeholders through oil and gas exploration, production, capitalization on global operations uh, uh, experience uh, with their team, uh, and they are building uh, a record of success in Colombia and Ecuador. Please help me welcome Roger with Grand Tierra. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Roger Trimble the Vice President of Investor Relations at Grand Tier Energy. We're very pleased to be at Entercom Denver and would like to thank all the Entercom team for delivering yet another excellent conference. And I realize that I'm standing in the way between you and cocktails and the baseball game, so I will be brief. There's our general advisory and I'd like to kick off with a quick overview of Grand Tierra's investment highlights. Overall, we have a strong balance sheet. Our net debt to EBITDA is 1.2 times and trending downwards. And we continue to strengthen our balance sheet via bond buybacks. Over the last year, we've also been repurchasing shares. Our current uh, normal course issuer bid, or NCIB, has expired as we have repurchased the full 10% amount of shares outstanding, and we're looking to renew this in early September, so a couple of weeks from now. Grand Tierra also has its core conventional oil assets in Colombia, South America, under water flood, which leads to higher oil recovery factors and arrests natural declines. We have proven that we are a low-cost operator and have a track record of five years of consecutive 1P reserve replacement. We have a large number of future development opportunities within our portfolio, including our polymer injection project at our biggest oil field, the Accordion Narrow uh, field up in north central Colombia, and additional well locations in the Sur Oriente and Chaza blocks in the far south of Colombia. At Grand Tierra, ESG is at the heart of our business and provides the foundation for us to deliver value to all of our stakeholders and remain a positive presence within the communities where we work. One of our key accomplishments in Colombia has been the planting of approximately 1.5 million trees and the conservation, preservation and reforestation of over 3,800 hectares of land since uh, 2018. Try that again. Here's a quick snapshot of Grand Tierra's asset base, reserves, and our 2023 budget. Overall, we're 100% oil focused, have a high quality, diversified asset base across three basins in Colombia and Ecuador. We also operate 99% of our production. This provides us with uh, the financial flexibility to control capital allocation. We'd really like to emphasize our after-tax net asset value or NAV per share numbers in the lower left. Looking at our proved developed producing reserves after-tax NAV per share, you can see that based on our most recent reserve report, our PDP A tax NAV is about $15 per share. Well, I checked our stock earlier today. Uh, we closed at 650 US, so we are trading at a 56% discount to our PDP ATAX NAV. So we believe our shares have a lot of upside potential. Our oil production was 33,700 barrels per day in Q2 of this year, up 7% from Q1 and up 10% from a year ago. So we are very comfortable with our 2023 production guidance of an average 
for the entire year of 32 to 34,000 barrels per day. This is a nice summary of our key achievements from our 2023 mid-year reserves update that we press released a couple of weeks ago. Overall, we added 26 million barrels of 2P reserves during the first six months of this year and 33 million barrels of 3P reserves. Our reserves replacement ratios were a very strong 433% on a 2P basis and almost 600% on a 3P basis. On a net debt adjusted basis, we increased our 1P reserves per share by 16%. And looking over the next four and a half years, our third-party independent reserve auditors forecast that Grantier will generate 1.3 billion US dollars in future net revenue on a 1P basis. Here's an overview of our 2023 capital program and objectives. You'll see we've outlined a disciplined budget which is focused on profitable production growth and shareholder returns. Our capital program is fully funded and the bulk of our drilling program on the development side has already been completed during the first half of this year when we drilled 21 wells spread across three of our biggest oil fields. With the majority of our capital spend out of the way, we expect our total capital to trend towards the lower end of our 2023 guidance, a range of about 210 to 230 million US. And looking at our base case, which assumes $85 Brent, we're planning on delivering 2023 free cash flow of $65 million this year. Our objectives this year have also been to continue to optimize our water floods, which have already led to reserve increases embedded in the numbers we just talked about with modest capital spend. We're also returning to exploration drilling in the second half of 2023 in Ecuador, which will provide some potential high impact catalysts. We really, uh, really like this slide because it illustrates just how strong our liquidity position is based on our 2023 guidance. We currently are looking at a free cash flow yield of almost 40% for this year. What this waterfall chart shows is a breakout of our 2023 cash flows. So after adjusting for financing costs and current taxes, we forecast 2023 cash flow of about 295 million, which speaks to our robust asset base. After accounting for bond and share repurchases made to date, we expect to exit 2023 with a cash position of over 150 million US. And as I mentioned earlier, given we operate 99% of our assets, we have complete control over the phasing and timing of capital expenditures. In terms of Grantier's bonds, we have no near, no near term maturities. Our 2025 senior notes are not due until February 25, and our 27s are due in May of that year. On the hedging front, we do not currently have any in place, which allows us to fully benefit from the current high oil price environment. However, we do go through an annual process, which we've just kicked off, of looking at our assets over a rolling five-year period and the necessary capital allocation program required over that time frame. So we are looking to reevaluate our hedging program during the third quarter of this year depending on where we plan and how much we plan on allocating capital during 2024. As I mentioned earlier, ESG is very much a cornerstone of how we operate in Colombia and Ecuador. In terms of the environment, we have maintained a long-term commitment to responsible resources development, requiring that our activities support a healthy environment and prosperous communities. We stand as an industry leader in Colombia in environmental stewardship, in both compliance with regulations and international best practices, and through our voluntary initiatives that address local, national, and international environmental issues. This slide illustrates a few key milestones we have achieved on the ESG front, including significant reductions in carbon emissions and flaring. But I'd really like to highlight our Natur Amazonas project, 
which focuses on the protection and conservation of the Andean Amazon rainforest in the Putumayo Basin in the far south of Colombia. This project was founded by Gran Tierra and the world-renowned non-governmental organization or NGO, Conservation International, and it has grown into an alliance of public and private institutions working together to address the root causes of deforestation. We began our reforestation work nearly a decade ago because one of our long-standing goals is to leave the environment in a better condition than when we arrived. During the first six years of the project, Grantier's initial investment of 13 million US dollars has already produced impactful results that have benefited the environment and local communities, including the reforestation and restoration of over 1,400 hectares of land and the planting of, of over 1.2 million trees. So as I mentioned earlier, when you also factor in our reforestation projects elsewhere in Colombia, the total reforested area over the last several years is 3,800 hectares and counting with over 1.5 million trees planted. Earlier I mentioned how our top tier conventional oil assets are all under water flood. So this slide shows our key assets plotted by original oil in place or, or OOIP water cut and recovery factor. Essentially, the message here is that as a field matures, we can use water flood technology in several of our key pools to improve recovery by displacing and sweeping oil towards other producing wells. Overall, we can use water flooding to dramatically increase our ultimate recovery factors. With almost 1.2 billion barrels of 2P original oil in place for water flooding, we see a material runway of opportunities for ongoing reserves growth over the next several years. Our current executive team took over the management of Grand Tierra back in 2015. These two waterfall charts show the uh, dramatic growth in both 1P and 2P reserves that we've achieved since 2015. Over the last eight years, we've achieved strong reserves replacement of 159% on a 1P basis and 207% on a 2P basis. Our biggest single oil field is Acordianero, which is in the middle Magdalena Valley Basin in the north central part of Colombia. Acordianero has been a fantastic oil field for us uh, since we acquired it in 2016. Since then, the field has gone from only four oil wells producing on primary to 112 wells and counting now, which is a mix of both producers and water injectors. Over this time frame, we've implemented a field-wide water flood and have recently started a polymer injection pilot project. In the upper right, you can see how we've driven down drilling and completion costs by over 50% by cutting in half the total number of days to drill and complete an average well. And in the lower right, we show the excellent 1P and 2P reserves replacement we've achieved in this oil field since 2016. One of the many things we love about Colombia and Ecuador are their excellent access to existing oil transportation infrastructure. In our main areas of operations, there are three routes by which we can get our oil to tidewater for export. So if an issue ever arri arises with one transportation route, there are always two other routes to uh, fall back on. So Gran Tierra benefits from Colombia and Ecuador and their significant oil takeaway capacity and there are no infrastructure bottlenecks in either country. Finally, we're proud of the high impact exploration land portfolio that we've built in Colombia and Ecuador. Gran Tierra has established a dominant position across the proven high potential underexplored Putumayo and Oriente basins. In the second half of 2023, we're very excited to restart our exploration drilling in Ecuador to follow up on the two significant discoveries we've made in that country last year. And 
I promise to be brief. Cocktails and baseball await. Uh, thanks again to Entercom Denver for the invitation, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of this excellent conference. Questions here? Sure. If, if there's any, yeah. yeah. Um, happy to field any questions folks might have. Can you talk about your shareholder base? Uh, so interestingly, uh, our number one shareholder uh, is GMT Capital. They have about 7% uh, of our shares. They are a hedge fund based in Atlanta. And uh, one of their uh, principals, uh, Kevin Andrus, uh, his spouse, Blanca Andrus, is one of the key owners of uh, Entercom. So we always love coming to Entercom. Uh, we get to meet with GMT every time we're here. As far as the rest of our shareholder base, uh, our institutional shareholding is Last time I looked, roughly 28% or so. Uh, management and um, our board of directors combined. It's hard to derive that directly from Bloomberg or outfits like that, but based on our internal numbers, that's around 5 to 6%. And then the rest is uh, uh, retail shareholders. So that, that's an interesting question. Um, what is the biggest challenge in Colombia? Uh, a lot of people will, of course, see the headlines about how uh, the president of Colombia, for example, will sometimes in speeches have anti-oil rhetoric. But when you hear that anti-oil rhetoric, what they specifically mean is they do not want to have any new exploration bidding rounds, so no more auctioning off of unassigned lands to oil and gas companies as part of their effort to transition to renewables. However, um, President Petro and his administration, when they came to power a year ago, made a firm commitment to honor all existing contracts, blocks, licenses, permits, and they have been absolutely true to their word on that front. Uh, for example, I mentioned earlier, we drilled 21 development wells in the first half of this year. Absolutely no roadblocks in terms of getting the drilling licenses and permits. And there also have been no uh, roadblocks to drilling exploration wells on existing blocks that you already own. So while we hope in time, Columbia will come around to having new exploration bidding rounds, um, we ourselves at Grand Tierra have about seven years, eight years of drilling inventory on our existing lands. And the Petro administration only has another three years to serve. So we have more than enough uh, in the hopper. So we're here to say that Columbia remains an excellent place to uh, drill for, explore, discover, uh, and produce uh, oil reserves. Yes? Do you have a sense of how much of the country's production is exported versus consumed within the country? Excellent question. Um, please don't quote me on this, but I know it's live streamed and being recorded. Colombia's total uh, country production is around uh, 800,000 barrels per day. And I, my last understanding is the vast majority of that say six to 700,000 barrels per day is exported. And for example, our uh, production since July 1st has been running around 35,000 barrels per day. Every one of our barrels is exported. Our oil finds its way. We typically will sell to a major oil marketer at Wellhead. They will then truck it to the nearest pipeline. The pipelines go out to either the Pacific coast or the Caribbean coast, and then they're all exported. So our oil can end up in the U.S. Gulf Coast, California, Chile. In some cases, if it's the highest bid, some of our oil has ended up in Asia. 
So very friendly in terms of exporting uh, the oil. Yes, all of our wells, all of our blocks are onshore, and I uh, should probably emphasize that all of our reservoirs are conventional. So it's the old-fashioned stuff that I studied back in university many years ago in the textbooks. You drill vertical wells, you perforate, you put a pump in, and depending on the well, the reservoir, the location, you can get anywhere from 500 to 1,500 barrels per day. And especially if you put things on water flood, the declines are quite shallow. So it's a, it's a very different beast in comparison to the unconventional shale oil and gas in North America. And do you own all your, your rigs or do you use uh... We use service companies like Patterson, Pioneer, et cetera. So we don't own any of the rigs. Services are readily available in terms of drilling completions, workovers in Colombia. It has a long track record as having an oil industry. Uh, I think first oil was discovered in Colombia in 1918, so 100 years plus. All right, Thanks. thank you very much.